Batman has pushed himself to peak human levels through an incredibly strict training routine. I've always found it incredible just how much you can change your own body and mind through training, which more than any superhero, Batman really personifies through his insane daily regimen. Batman's training routine consists of various short but extremely intense sessions throughout the day, focusing on maintaining muscle, building endurance, and practicing his fighting skills. Batman begins training early in the morning and does what always seems to be cardio focused workouts that average about 30 minutes each. This ranges from a jog to a 5 mile run to rock climbing, jumping rope, or swimming, with him occasionally taking a much longer cardio workout like running 20 miles. Batman will then follow up his morning cardio with another 30 minute session of yoga meditation focusing on his martial art techniques or working his skills on a punching bag. But in the case that Batman finds himself needing to condition further, he will forego these focused training sessions and instead go right into another endurance focused lifting session targeting specific muscle groups of either his entire upper or lower body. Later comes Batman's midday or afternoon workout that on average seems to last about an hour and a half. That interestingly is a rather important number. These midday workouts now seem to focus on either building power through performing heavy lifts like deadlifts, squats, and any other power lifts, or maintaining functional muscle strength through doing a single 30-minute session of kettlebell workouts, gymnastic rings, push-ups, pull-ups, parkour practice, or primarily workouts that cause him to get a full body workout. He will then go into a 30 minute sparring session if he has an available partner or continue with more full body strength training. Then to end his training session for the day in the evening, Bruce will go for another hour to hour and a half of focusing on his fighting skills as he practices with various forms of weapons, martial art techniques, or sparring as he gets ready for the night. But what's even more critical is what a person would need to do to sustain these frequent high intensity training sessions for what seems to be six to sometimes seven days a week. Batman's training routine takes into account not only training his muscles, but precise protocols and even time limits for allowing his brain and body to be able to handle these frequent high intensity sessions while still being able to function as Batman and Bruce Wayne without burning himself out. So what exactly does he do? Something extremely critical to be aware of is what actually sustains your brain in being able to continually handle these training sessions. Our ability to get into a state of focus to be able to pursue and even feel like pursuing anything at all, let alone handle a variety of high intensity training sessions throughout the week, is entirely dictated by a single chemical currency being dopamine. Dopamine contracts our visual world, allowing us to focus on something in particular, and if one is not careful, Batman's training routine would easily wipe out someone's dopamine reserves, and worse than that, will lower their dopamine baseline, to where they then suffer through what will feel like an inability to focus on training or doing anything at all, all the time. If Batman depleted his dopamine, he would literally have to stop and do no training for a while, which we never see him have to do because of one thing he does. And while we do see that Batman often engages in a 30 minute or longer meditation session, as my previous video showed that he practices a form known as Togel meditation, this still requires him to have an extreme ability to focus, as he focuses on something like his own fears. No, it's one thing that Batman does does in his training that allows him to keep going day after day. Did you notice how Batman rarely has a single training session lasting longer than an hour and a half? Batman cleverly keeps what is called an intermittent training schedule. He stops his dopamine and thus drive and focus from ever burning out since he doesn't do any activity for too long and too frequently. Almost more importantly, Batman doesn't celebrate having a good workout or training session and doesn't have to hype himself and thus his brain up or drinking six cups of coffee to motivate himself, all of which dramatically spike someone's dopamine and done too frequently lower their baseline to where they're just really not feeling it. He simply does the activity and moves on with his day, allowing him to not ever over-release the chemicals driving him. A really interesting fact is that our brains operate on what are called ortradian cycles, or rather every day our brains operate on 90 minute cycles, where for 90 minutes they are able to increasingly engage in an activity before losing focus for the next 90. And what do you know, Batman's training sessions hardly ever exceed 90 minutes. And added with Batman's specific recovery routine, allow him to achieve higher levels of performance and what can only be considered superhuman fitness levels. We see in various Batman films and comics that Bruce never fully recovers from many of his injuries. And with his workout routine and the fact that he then engages in 6 or so hours of beating the crap out of criminals every night, he's at least at risk for overuse injury to his muscles 
rules, which would require him to stop being Batman for a while, but luckily there's a few recovery protocols he seems to follow in his own way. In order to recover the fastest way possible, Batman would have to begin recovery from a workout session immediately following the workout. This could be achieved by him going straight into a short sleeping or relaxation session, triggering his nervous system to begin the recovery phase of his training, rather than waiting until he went to bed for the night, which we know he doesn't. This is because a quick nap that he does do, in a rather risky way, deliberately disengages the sympathetic portion of his nervous system and engages the calming, repairing, parasympathetic portion of his nervous system. So instead of ending his workouts by hopping on his phone or looking up what the Riddler's up to, Batman is able to enhance and force his nervous system to begin immediate recovery by taking a few minutes to sleep, lie motionless, or even undergo a form of self-hypnosis to increase his recovery time. He could periodically use an ice bath or cold therapy to lower inflammation and muscle soreness to recover faster, but rarely do we ever see Batman slide into a tub of cold water. Which is probably for the best, as emerging data shows if someone like Bruce were to take an ice bath within four hours of a workout, while this would lower the inflammation and any soreness he would experience from a workout, it would also short circuit and stop many of the signals that promote muscle repair and growth, lowering the strength benefits of his workouts. Additionally, many non-steroid drugs that Batman could use to recover are known to reduce the cardio benefits he would receive from his daily workouts. So in order to recover faster, Batman deliberately triggers his repair response to what might be the most bizarre and crucial component of Batman's training routine being his sleep schedule. Batman does sleep normally occasionally and seems to go on and off of his insane sleep schedule to a more customary one that is normally needed for anyone to mentally and physically recover from his training routine. But often Batman practices an extremely dangerous form of sleeping that can easily be done wrong known as micro sleep where Bruce will deliberately fall unconscious for a short period of time ranging anywhere from 1 to 30 second micro naps, losing and regaining consciousness so rapidly that you may hardly notice that he was asleep at all. While micro sleeping can be extremely dangerous when done incorrectly, Bruce learned that if he trained his brain to intentionally go into periodic micro sleeps, only in situations like when he was sitting at the back computer, he could get enough sleep in to avoid having to undergo a normal sleep cycle. This also solved the major problem that anyone wanting to train like Bruce encountered, and helps to explain how Bruce was able to gain expertise in a variety of skills, from his famous detective skills to 12 PhDs and 127 martial arts styles, maybe that's still a little over the top. As much as I grew up admiring this character and the sheer effort he puts into everything he does, at the end of the day, he is simply an ideal, a fictional creation that personifies humanity's greatest feature, a feature that Batman holds above most others who aren't aware of what to do. Whenever you learn a new skill, your nervous system is the one and only part of you that is actually learning anything, and how fast it learns to do anything is dictated by a few vital things that Batman does really well. We discussed in this video how important your ability to focus is. What's important here is that if you're roughly over the age of 25, you can no longer passively learn to do anything, as your brain is no longer in a constant plastic state. So you have to trigger learning through deliberate focus. And more than that, what really separates Bruce from most others is how badly an individual needs or wants their nervous system to change determines how fast they will actually learn a new skill by a lot. So if your life depends on learning how to fight or master engineering, your brain is more likely to learn that skill in record time. But if you found that none of this was very interesting, then I saved my most intriguing fact for last. In order for Batman to keep up his training routine for more than a day, he would have to follow one serious phenomenal diet plan, averaging eating anywhere from four to 6,000 calories a day and eating certain foods at specific times. I'm always making new videos like this, so subscribe so you don't miss learning about Batman's phenomenal diet.